I teach chemistry at many different levels. And no matter which class I'm teaching, my regular chemistry classes all the way up to my AP classes, I want to make sure I finish what I'm starting. It's like um, going through teaching a chemistry class, sort of like reading a mystery novel. And if you don't read the last chapter to figure out who done it, then you're really missing something. Even if I wind up short on time at the end of the year, this is a demonstration I will end my classes with in my regular chemistry classes. It deals with electrochemistry. And the word electrochemistry some, sometimes strikes fear into the heart of any teacher. It shouldn't. Whether you realize it or not, you've probably been teaching electrochemistry all year long. What we have here is a Hoffman apparatus. And for this particular experiment, I'm going to be using, well, I'm not sure if I want to tell you, and that's exactly the way I say it to my students. I'm going to do the electrolysis of water. Now, there's a problem with that. What there's a problem with that. There's a problem with there's that. There's a problem with that. There's a problem. I think she's got a problem with her electrolysis. Well, the problem is... By Jove. The problem is, is that she can't electrolyze water. Mm. Yeah, that's the, that's the amusing part, and that is she can't electrolyze, electrolyze water. water. But she, she won't tell her students that. No, 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 no. She'll come up with this other uh, reason. Oh, you know, the, in that the water is a poor conductor of electricity. In the water, well, in our understanding or, or in our opinion, water does not conduct electricity yeah. at all. Yeah, but in in her understanding, uh, the water is a poor conductor of electricity. So she has to add something to the water. Sure. Yeah, but that that but our point of view is that what, not only is water a non-conductor of electricity. It's only the impurities contained in water that do conduct electricity. Ooh. That's why they have to add an electrolyte Light. to the electrolytic process. So it makes you wonder actually what's happening within the electrolytic process. Absolutely, of course. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yep, absolutely. This is so true. There's so many people out there with differing views and opinions about anything, mm. whether it's sport, whether it's politics, whether it's religion, whether it's chemistry, whether it's science, whether it's the shape of the earth. It's irrespective. Mm. A lot of people have di ca cannot seem to get on with one another. Mm. A lot of people sing from different song sheets mm. all of the time. Yeah, that's because a lot of people are unhappy. That's because a lot of people are unhappy. Absolutely, of course. Now, if, imagine a world filled with happy people. Oh, wouldn't everybody get on? Oh, it'd be heaven, wouldn't it? Nobody would be oh, bliss. Nobody would be at their uh, wheel, you know, sharpening their axes, you know. Oh, why? Right. Because they haven't got an axe to grind. Because they wouldn't have an axe to grind yeah. at all. They'd be so happy in their life. Hello, everybody. They'd be friendly. They'd be yeah. nice and polite. They, they wouldn't worry if anybody did them any harm or any wrong because... Nobody they, would be doing it. They wouldn't care because they'd be happy. Well, nobody would be doing. Oh, right, Nobody yes. would be committing any harm, injury or loss to, to anybody. anybody. Oh, we wouldn't right. have a We wouldn't have a, a legal system. Oh, that's We wouldn't right. have a police system, a oh, policing yes. system. We'd, all of the law, the judicial system wouldn't exist. Yeah. Bye, no bye. need for solicitors. No. Absolutely, of course. Mm. Wouldn't it be lovely, eh? Absolutely. Wouldn't it be lovely to live in a world like that? Reminds me of a Beach Boys song. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older than we were? Absolutely, of course. Wouldn't it be nice? Of course. Now, wouldn't it be nice if someone out there could prove to you and me that water's hydrogen and oxygen? H2O. Two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. Absolutely, of course. So, uh, yes, what we've got on for everyone uh, for this evening is this. 
Peter and Pete's YouTube Creator Challenge. Absolutely, yeah. of course. Proving water is hydrogen and, and oxygen. H2O. And this, the purpose of this video is to send a, a message or to send a, a shout out or call out to all YouTube creators who are, who are interested in chemistry or even interested in the world around, around everybody who want to show to us that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah, we've, we've here, we are presenting the viewers and uh, lots of other YouTube creators, um, as Peter's mentioned, who are into their chemistry, into their science, to prove to us, to, we're giving you a challenge to prove to us that water's hydrogen and oxygen. Mm. And we've got a, we've got a the little, official challenge is now. now. Yes, and we've got a little news, a, a little ticker down below. With uh, we've got put, included lots of YouTube creators who we feel are are suited to prove to us are, are for the challenge. challenge. Yeah, basically. Absolutely. Yeah, These are the people. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of people on YouTube who are creators, got their own channels, who, in our opinion, should be more than adequate and incompetence in succeeding with our challenge taking oh, on our challenge more than adequate in taking on the challenge you know you said attempt in, oh sorry incompetence in oh, no, oh, competence. oh sorry no not that they are incompetent well that's <laughs> arguable really but there's a lot of people on youtube who have their own channels with chemistry and everything who we feel are should be um, capable. Qualified, qualified, capable. qualified, capable, experienced, experts to prove to us that water's hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. So there we go. And we're giving you guys, plus our viewers out there, the opportunity to uh, take up the challenge and prove to us that water's hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah. So this video is mainly going to focus around uh, the electrolysis. What mainstream would say is the electrolysis of water. We're going to present to people in this video. Uh, information that supports our view so that people can if you're a viewer you can get an understanding of our view and you can then decide what you'd need to do to prove to us that water is hydrogen and oxygen absolutely of course and yeah. Um, yeah we'll get and we'll give mainstreams understanding as well yeah basically yeah. so we've got the two two parts because there's there's a duality with the debate because uh -huh. it, it is a, actually a debate whether yeah, water know, yeah. is H2O. Uh, we feel there is no debate because it just requires proof. Mm. Let's go on, let's go on. But uh, before we get on, I oh, think well, we yeah. should thank... Uh, just need to thank Yar, FPV and Greg McGuinigal from for the Anton Petrov's video on water that he did. That he did, yeah, that we included in a previous so video. Thanks so thanks ever so much for that one. And uh, if you'd like us to have a look at any video or YouTube upload for us to um, comment on, comment on, or whatever, give our evaluation or whatever. Please feel free to drop no, leave us a link below. But uh, so, so let's get on and get, let's get on with the challenge for mm, everyone. Right. So let's have a look at the electrolysis of water. Now, so we'll leave Penny there for a little while, uh, just standing around, oh, well, and yeah. let's have a little look now. Um, for a number of years, we've 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 covered. Uh, water uh, we've written our book and uh, you know it is our view that water is not hydrogen oxygen water is uh, uh, a single substance it's an element nobody can come ever come to know what water is it can never be created nor destroyed it can only change from one form to another absolutely so for example solid ice for example can be turned into liquid water that liquid water could be turned to steam or vapor and that vapor can be turned to gas hmm. and it can come the other way as well can't absolutely, it absolutely so yeah. the gas to the steam to the steam to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, liquid to the liquid to the solid ice hmm. for example so this this article on wikipedia is all about the electrolysis of water because is, yeah, because the electrolysis of water is one method that science uses in order to convince people that water is hydrogen and oxygen. Hmm. Okay, so according to this information, electrolysis of water is the process of, of using electricity to decompose water into oxygen and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas released in this way can be used as hydrogen fuel or remixed with the oxygen to create oxyhydrogen gas, which is used in welding and other applications, and also palmed off as like Brown's gas. Absolutely, of course. Sometimes called water splitting, electrolysis requires a minimum potential difference 
of 1.23 volts. Sure. Now, the historically, um, it was uh, in 1800, Alessandro Volta invented the voltaic pile, and a few weeks later, the English scientists William Nicholson and Anthony Carlyle used it for the, for the, for the electrolysis of water. What they did is that they stuck two pieces of metal that were connected to a voltaic pile and put place them in a stream of running water and they noticed that bubbles were given off at both uh, both electrodes hmm. and following uh, Lavoisier's uh, treatise of chemistry where it was kind of cemented that water was made of hydrogen and oxygen they thought from their observation that he was absolutely right that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Absolutely, yeah, sure, of course. So, from that period of time, it's it's been um, it's been kind of considered that water is hydrogen and oxygen H two O, and the uh, the understanding that water was an element, as in your classical elements, mm. the four elements, that was basically just shoved discarded. Shoved, discarded. Mm. Okay. So we can see that there has been a transformation in thinking. Okay. Um, so where should but we is go it right? Is but it it absolutely, is it absolutely right? Oh. Um, is it actually true? Because since that period of time, water hasn't changed at all, has it? No. Water no. hasn't changed. But in our in our opinion, the thinking has changed. Mm. People are thinking and looking at they're looking at water, but they're applying their thoughts in a different way and interpreting what they're seeing with all of their experiments and demonstrations with water, using water, in a different way, and not looking at water as being a single substance. Yeah, basically, yeah. Or an unknown substance. So electrolysis of water, in mainstream understanding, is carried out in a number of settings in the educational establishment. And we've got a new video here. We've got a video of, here. Of a, a, a clear example of it. Yeah, Scott Millam, here we go. Um, lots of people have commented on this, I'm sure. But what Scott does essentially is that he's got a battery um, connected to um, two electrodes, uh, cathode anode, cathode negative, anode positive. Uh, there's a, um, The electrodes are submerged in a solution of sodium hydroxide in this case and there's two test tubes um, that are filled with water over the top of each electrode and as you can see gases are being um, released at the anode and cathode and collecting at the bottom of the in or the tops of the inverted test, test tubes, tubes yeah. now according to the electrolysis of water we're going to get hydrogen at the right hand side no left hand side Mm. and oxygen at the right hand, hand side. side yes okay and if we can uh, if we look co closely we'll be able to notice that there is a two to one ratio mm. two parts hydrogen one part oh, oxygen. oxygen and this is basically what the electrolysis of water um, uh, tells people when you go to school and you learn about it in your chemistry classes and everything else. Yes, isn't it? so they use this to, to the viewer to convince them that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Absolutely, of course. So, um, so but our bone, there you go. Our, That's that. Yeah, our, our bone of contention with this is that a lot of people who are watching this uh, demonstration or are familiar with mainstream chemistry will think that the hydrogen, the gases are coming from the water. In our understanding, the gases aren't coming from the water at all. Oh, absolutely, of course. The gases are coming for, from whatever is placed in the water. Yeah, so in, in, the, in this demonstration, what we're seeing here is the decomposition of the sodium hydroxide that was added to the water plus the decomposition of the electrodes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because our understanding is that water breaks down whatever is placed in it and the electricity acts as a catalyst to speed up the rate of decomposition of whatever is in the water. Absolutely, of course. So it, the electricity is just helping the water to decompose whatever is in it quicker. The materials. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, um, so it's clear there's two sides to the, the argument. Yeah. A lot of people look at this demonstration and think water's being split, whereas Peter and myself and probably some other people think the opposite and think it's the materials in water in the, that have contact with water that are being decomposed. Oh, yeah. 
Now, when you go to school, uh, you could be faced with uh, where's the hour? You could be faced with with this uh, little little uh, booklet. But task. task to do when you're in your chemistry class. US Department of Energy electrolysis of water. They're actually telling you that you can electrolyze water, whereas Penny knows that there's a problem. Mm. So electrolysis of water, student objective, this is what you do in your class. You'll be able to explain how hydrogen can be extracted from water. Mm. So they're instantly telling you that hydrogen is a component of water. Mm. And what you'd need is your, your battery. A bit mm. similar to... Uh, Scott Milam's that video very similar we've just seen. A piece of aluminium foil uh, for your electrodes or two pieces. You'd need some salt, mm. so does. not sodium hydroxide, but in this case, you'd be using well, it um, doesn't say well, it doesn't what, state what doesn't say salt. what salt, but let's say sodium chloride. Okay, yeah, that's the salt, let, isn't let, it? That's the salt, and you've got electrical wires, a uh, beaker, a small bowl. Um, some water, stirring rod, graduated cylinder, and a science journal mm. to so obviously write down your findings or read up on some background information. Mm, yeah. Now, when we, let's say we use sodium chloride as a salt for this demonstration. Um, not once in this background information do they tell you that um, chlorine gas would be given off. Because at the anode. At the anode. If you use sodium chloride in this demonstration as your salt, you will get um, chlorine, chlorine gas, gas produced at your anode. anode. Mm. And... They don't take that information into account, do they? No. Because they, because they only want people to understand hydrogen and oxygen are produced hmm. from the electrolysis of water. See, the trouble is with this booklet is that this booklet is aimed at grade 5 to 8. Yeah. Now, I know that if they use sodium hydroxide, like that Scott, that video we've seen just with Scott before, Miller. sodium hydroxide is quite caustic, so it could be quite dangerous. And they wouldn't really use an acid because an acid can be quite dangerous too. Absolutely, it would ruin their school uniforms, wouldn't so, it? So, which is why you know they're hoping that people might use salt, table salt, because it's harmless table salt. Sure, but, but then you could get you, you could breathe in the chlorine gas. Absolutely, but uh, you get but according to the information here, you get bubbles of oxygen gas form at the anode and bubbles of hydrogen gas form at the cathode. And again, if we were using sodium chloride, we'd get chlorine gas produced yeah, yeah. at the anode. Mm. So the information here isn't accurate sure. mm. because they're not being specific with what with salt. the salt one uses. But it, but it, what it does demonstrate is that you can't use any particular salt. You have to be very um, specific specific with what uh, uh, electrolyte you use. Sure, to get the desired result. But the the thing is, is that if you're splitting water, then why are why matter. are you getting chlorine if you electrolyze oh, right, yeah. sodium chloride solution? Well, because if you're getting, it doesn't make sense because you, that's the electrolyte. Yeah, because if you use sodium chloride as a, an electrolyte and you get chlorine gas, well, the chlorine comes from the chloride. So it makes stands to reason that you're actually splitting the it, sodium chloride. You're you're decomposing, not the water. Absolutely, you're decomposing the electrolyte so, and not water. Yeah. So if you go back on Scott Milam's video, he's using uh, a solution of sodium hydroxide. So is he not splitting the sodium from the or the sodium hydroxide? Is he not splitting that? Or absolutely, of course. Or is he not de basically decomposing the sodium? The hydro and the oxide. Yeah, basically. Because yeah. sodium hydroxide, NaOH, so you've got sodium, oxygen and hydrogen. hydrogen. And you're going to get hydrogen and oxygen off at the anode and cathode, So, and then that would leave the sodium. Well, it would be leave a sodium hydrate in the solution. Absolutely, of course. So, you know, it's, there, there's clearly uh, an issue with the electrolysis of water. water. It's not as clear-cut as what some people would believe yeah. it to be. And another thing with the comments on this video is that if one was to read through the comments, one can quite easily see that uh, the guy, Scott Milam, he's tried electrolysis with using a number of different electrolytes. And the only one that he could use to get the desired effect of getting his two to one was sodium hydroxide. Yeah, we've got to remember if we're, as, as mainstream tells us, if we're supposed to be electrolyzing water, on a two and water is H2O, we should always get two parts hydrogen on one part oh, oxygen. oxygen. 
two time parts and time hydrogen, again. Absolutely, two parts hydrogen off at the cathode and the oxygen off at the anode. Mm. That's what we should get because we're splitting water. Mm. Any variation of that would indicate that it's more likely that we're decomposing the electrolyte and all the electrodes. Mm. Wouldn't and, it really? And, and from what we've done, we've even used some, uh, placed some lithium hydroxide in a freezer for a whole week and we put it into solution and we electrolyzed that solution and we got a seven to one ratio. ratio. Now, we've, we've also found this piece of information here um, from uh, Stack Exchange Chemistry, here we go. Uh, ratios of produced gases in water electrolysis. I just did a little water electrolysis experiment at home by immersing two aluminium electrodes in water with a small amount of table salt, he must sodium have, chloride. He must have been reading that uh, American Department of Oh, he could well have done, yeah. yeah. The, the voltage of the battery was six volt. Oh, what surprised me is that I was able to collect a much bigger volume of gas at the electrode connected to the cathode than to the anode, about a factor of 10. So where's this two to one come from? I would have expected, he goes on to write, a ratio of one to two two times more hydrogen than oxygen. What went wrong kind of thing? There you go. And he's, he's gotten some answers, but obviously, you know, they're obviously going to say, well, you did something wrong. Or the oxygen in the water reacted more with the electrode. Absolutely, of course. But then they, they're still back to square one in proving there's oxygen in water. water. Absolutely, yes. You know, think about yeah. it logically. You know, there's no... The electrolysis doesn't prove water is H2O. So if you're ex trying to explain away uh, someone's, re uh, someone's findings through their demonstration by saying the oxygen must have reacted with the oxygen in the water, then it's, you're going around in circles because hmm. you've still got to prove there's oxygen in the water. And not only that, people have to realise that some compounds can, be, can create quite a difficult uh, electrolytic um, environment. In that, if you use sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate as an electrolyte, you could be waiting a very long time to get anything. any gas at the anode. Absolutely, anything. A very long time. Absolutely. And cool. there are instances where the anode, where in our experience of carrying out electrolysis, the anode will always break down. Yeah, it may always. It may take a lot of time, depending on what material you use, obviously. But at the end of the day, the anode will always break, break down. down. Okay. But whenever there's decomposition, in our understanding, there is a release. There's a release of gas. Mm. Gases are, are, are released. It happens which, with dead bodies. Absolutely, of course. Now, um, so, but what we did is that we, I mean, we've done something very similar, but we didn't use sodium chloride, table salt, and we didn't use aluminium. We used magnesium, didn't we? Yes. And in a previous video, what we did is that we used... Uh, I think we used the two two magnesiums, one for the magnesium ribbon for the electrode cathode and magnesium ribbon for the anode, and we got more gas at the anode than we did the cathode, mm. and we changed, we varied the uh, parameters, and we used a tungsten cathode cathode, and we had a magnesium ribbon el electrode for the anode, and we still got more gas off at the anode. Yeah, yeah. And some people mentioned that it was your power supply, didn't they? Oh, well, yeah. They, put, they, they explained it away, the anomaly, because we didn't get the two to one, obviously. And they explained it away as, oh, you've got a faulty power supply. Oh, no, they said that our DC power supply was providing, a, AC was trickling through. AC was trickling through. So you had switching between the electrodes. Sure. Was it, the, the people come out with so much rubbish, it's unbelievable. Because uh, their explanation to account why that, why to account for that was because also our and the gas at the anode was hydrogen so these people are thinking well how can you get hydrogen off an anode it doesn't happen so the, it must have been switching so it's the only way they could think why you were getting to hydrogen. counter yeah the observation so excuse me what we thought we'd do is we thought we'd use a battery absolutely yes do the same thing but use a battery okay so, so let's see whether we get more gas again, more gas off at the anode, and let's see whether we get hydrogen off at the anode. Absolutely, of course. So let's have a little butcher's. Just by using a battery. Where's the battery? That, that would eliminate any 
potential switching of AC trickling through our DC yeah, supply. Because the DC battery will only um, pump out pump DC. out DC current. So it, we've got DC. our yeah DC oh yeah not DC current sorry DC. So we've got um, our battery um, on the charger connected to the charger, and we've got the green light, so it's charged. So everyone knows that we've got a green for go. We've got uh, the uh, the green light. So we're going to uh, take take the two leads off from the charger and connect on the uh, the uh, wires connect that would connect the battery to the electrodes. Yeah. So let's how we are. Let's go. Yeah, let's move it along a bit. So there's there you, you're playing around with the there's the cathode. lead going to the cathode. So black to black going to the cathode, and the cathode is on the right hand right side. hand side. When we when we're looking at our electrolytic tub, and uh, there's our anode wire, or our positive wire, going to the anode, which is on the left hand side. So here we go. Now it's twelve volt battery. Let's have a little look at what happens, so that we can see the two wires connected at the bottom. Mm. Now let's have a little butchers. There we go. Um, now we can see bubbles coming up, coming off from the anode activity activity and there we go let's have a look let's move it over and yes. in, in this water we don't we didn't use an electrolyte yeah we didn't use an electrolyte we, we feel we don't need to absolutely of course because uh, allegedly we're supposed to be splitting water, water. Yeah. and they we don't get hardly any movement at all there mm. at the cathode which is unusual because all the time we've done electrolysis oh. it's always been or electrolysis using water, it's always been the case that we've had more gas produced at the cathode than um, the anode. The anode. Mm. Whereas this throws it all out. Mm. Totally now, just... Yeah, now I, I had actually wondered whether the reason why we're getting more gas of, off at the anode is because the there's more surface area on the magnesium ribbon. On the, on the anode material. Yeah. But th it can't be that because you've got it's all relative and you've always got an equilibrium, as it were. Mm. There's always an equilibrium between the uh, the both the, electrodes, both electrodes, and the amount of electricity that's passing between the two. Yeah, because the the amount of gases that are produced are all reliant on the amount of electricity that can be conducted. Ab absolutely, of course. Uh, there's a few bubbles coming off, not many on the cathode, and we go back. There we go. Right, okay. So that's that. So let's we 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 run that overnight, and this is what we have on the following morning. Okay. So there's the battery still there, still in one piece, and here we go. Let's have a little butchers right there. Oh, no, we've got the. There you go. You can see the two electrodes that there, the two wires there. Yeah, just um, yeah. Let's just move this over. Wait there. Not a faffing about. What's what's the matter? There we go. Oh, here we go. Now here's the um, cathode. You can see bubbles coming off. Okay. Yeah, there we go. But the bottle's pretty much filled up with water still. Mm, yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the anode bottle. Here we. Go. Wow, look at this. It's empty. It's empty. Totally empty. There's um, yeah. You know, it's totally empty. Again, we've had more gas produced at the anode than the cathode, cathode. Mm. which totally goes against the electrolysis of water. Mm. See, so okay. there's the magnesium ribbon. There's the magnesium ribbon there. We can see the bubbles coming off. Um, I mean, it's, to be fair, it's absolutely, absolutely, this demonstration um, basically knocks down the electrolysis of, of water. water. Mm. Because this shouldn't be happening. Shouldn't be happening. Allegedly, according to mainstream, we should be um, splitting water, hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. Hmm. So let's test the gas. Absolutely, yes. So here so we go. So again, by using a 12 volt battery, we've demonstrated that we're collecting more gas at the anode than the cathode. Absolutely, yeah, sure. So here we go. Here's the bottle. Uh, let's just move this along. Uh, let's just play this. Here we go. Uh, there we go, right there. We got the splint there. Let's go, right there. Are we ready? Or we'll just put the volume on so we can hear the, the uh, hear anything. See yeah. what happens. Now, last time we did this, we got hydrogen, didn't we? Uh, yep. The anode. Yeah. So hydrogen burns. Here we well, go. Here we go. 
and you get the squeaky pop. So we'll let's just again. do that again. Oh, here we go. I shouldn't have said hydrogen burn. Hydrogen doesn't burn. It's the impurities in hydrogen that burn. Good. Here anyway, we go. There we go. But you do get the squeaky pop. Now, that is indicative of, of the presence hydrogen. of hydrogen, hydrogen. Yeah. the squeaky pop. So we can conclude that using magnesium uh, as an anode, magnesium, the material hmm. uh, magnesium for the anode, we can conclude we'll that... Just get the flame colour up as well. Oh, the flame colour, that hydrogen was produced. Let me at the anode? At the anode. Hmm. I'm just going to get the flame colour, see if I can get it. Right there. There. Oh, there you go, right. I'm not going to do it again, because we can clearly see it's a yellow, yellow flame, flame colour, hmm. and yellow is reminiscent of sodium, sodium. the presence yeah. of sodium. And the reason why we think it's given off a yellow flame is because the magnesium that we used, in our that we bought, came from America, and in America they use they manufacture magnesium through the Dow process, which is um, it's an electrolysis of magnesium salts from seawater. Seawater, sodium chloride. And there's your there's your source of sodium. sodium. Absolutely, of course. Basically. So it could it could well be that magnesium doesn't even exist in seawater. And they well pure, purely just using sodium. But, well, we could we could put forward the view that magnesium is a sodium-based based metal. metal. Absolutely, of course. It, you know, it makes sense. Um, so it's clear that the electrolysis of water is gr in grave danger of being totally and utterly annihilated. annihilated, given the information here. Hmm. Now, okay. let's, have a, let's have a quick go back onto that chemistry exchange. So, absolutely, yeah. So let's with his With his thing. So he's done a little water electrolysis experiment, which is exactly what we've done. But instead of well, using electrolysis using water. Yeah. Um, but instead of immersing two aluminium electrodes in, in water, we immersed uh, some magnesium ribbon on one on the anode, and we used a tungsten on the other. But we've produced hydrogen off at the anode, and we produced a lot more hydrogen at the anode than the cathode. Mm. But we left a comment on this one at the end. Here we go. At the bottom. Let's read the comment. Here we go. Here you go. So uh, I've done exactly the same electrolytic demonstrations, not just with aluminium, but also with stainless steel and magnesium materials for both anode and cathode. I have not used any electrolyte because one doesn't need to. On all occasions, gases were produced from the process. From doing these demonstrations, both the anode and cathode electrodes decomposed over time. And what's more interesting is that the same gases were produced at the anode and the cathode. Hydrogen. So using magnesium ribbon as the electrodes was more interesting because after doing the electrolytic process on three separate occasions, once using a 12 volt battery, there was always more gas produced at the anode than the cathode. And this again was hydrogen. And we shouldn't be getting it. We shouldn't be getting hydrogen at, at the, the anode, anode according to the electrolysis of water, water. idea. In my understanding, another interesting point was that after the collecting, after collecting the gas from the anode and cathode using magnesium ribbon and aluminium, both gases ignited with and a clear yellow flame was seen, just like the one we've Absolutely, shown. Absolutely, of course, yeah. In my understanding, using the same material for both anode and cathode electrodes, one will observe them decompose during the electrolytic process. This would happen with any material used for electrodes, but given the way some materials are manufactured, the decomposition rate would could take much longer. Absolutely, of course, yeah. There you go. So what we're showing to everyone here is that there's there's evidence here that basically conflicts with the idea that water is made of hydrogen and, and oxygen. oxygen. Water is being split using the electrolytic process. process. So, so we, we can, just need to go. Back we just to need to go back to Penny, don't we? Yeah. Penny, Penny, Penny. Penny, 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 Penny. So, um, you'll like this one because this it gets even worse. This this is a classic. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. So let's have a look, little look. Let's switch off. Let's have a little look and see what Penny actually does with her bits and bobs, yeah. with her Hoffman apparatus. Right. Well, the thing is, is that what she's doing is that she's showing to her students that she's 
splitting water. She's electrolyzing water. Yeah, she's splitting the water into the hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So, so let's have a look at what um, uh, what chemicals she's actually using in her demonstration. Yeah, absolutely, of course. So let's come on then. Hurry up. Oh, we just need to. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Oh, there you go. So she's got a large beaker. Oh, look, she's already put. She's already popped them in. There yeah, you there you go. So she's put. Uh, what's she put in that beaker now? I do believe it. she's what putting is it? in there <sighs> sodium sulfate. Oh, it's sodium, sodium sulfate. sulfate. Sodium sulfate, and what's this other stuff she's putting in? This is. I think she didn't she use a pipette? Yes, yeah, she uses a pipette. Something blue, isn't it? I'm sure she. I'm sure she. Uh, I'm sure she rides a bike, motorcycle like a Harley Davidson. Yeah, I'm, I'm not she's too... wearing this horrible denim skirt. skirt yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's horrible, disgusting. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so she's adding some. Uh, what's it look? It looks like bromothymol blue. blue. Bromothymol blue. Right. So we've got. Let's have a little. Let, now before let, let's go and have a little yeah, investigation. So, yeah, let's have a look at bromothymol blue. blue. Now here we go. We've got bromothymol blue. Uh, let's Is go. It a there. pH indicator. It's just a pH indicator. indicator. Now. Uh, here we go. Let's have a little look at this picture. Here we go. Now, oh, obviously, what happens is is that when it's in a solution of something, it will change colour, basically, because it's a pH indicator. Right. Okay. So that's all we need to know. It will change colour. And she's using a sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate. Here we go. Uh, so Na two, Na two, SO four. So there's already oxygen present, isn't there? There's already oxygen present. There's sulfur oh. present. There's sulfur present. But what's important? And sodium. But what's important with this is that it's uh, it's got a salt and an acid combined. Oh yeah, of course. Salt, sodium, and an acid. Absolutely, so of course. Acid. So it should have a pH of around neutral. So it should be neutral. Yeah, it should be neutral in pH. Uh, let's have a little look at the production. Let's have a little production. Here we go. Production. Um, let's have a little butchers uh, production the chemical, chemical industry. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, the most important chemical, sodium sulfate production, is during hydrochloric acid production either from sodium chloride, salt, and sulfuric acid. acid. Okay, so we, there's already a, an acid present in its manufacture. Yeah. In the Mannheim process, or from sulfur dioxide in the Hargreaves process. And sulfur dioxide is used to manufacture sulfur, or sulfuric, sulfuric acid, acid yeah. one of the two. Yeah. So there's acids already present in its manufacture. Or the second major production of sodium sulfate are the processes where surplus sodium hydroxide is neutralised by sulfuric acid. acid. So th we've got the acid already present. Now, so let's go back to Penny. Bearing those pieces of information in mind, let's go back to Penny. You'll love this. This is, I think this is absolutely brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Mm. So she's got her little mixture of bromothymol blue and sodium sulfate. And what she does is that she pours uh, that mixture into her Hoffman, Hoffman apparatus. Here well, we go. Well, just move it forward because you don't want to play the yeah, whole video. Yeah, we don't want to play the whole video. So there oh. it goes. And what she does is that she runs the electrolytic process. So let's have a look after a while. Oh, what we should do is have a look at the colour. Yeah. You can tell it's green. Yes, yes. So green. Bro wait, wait, sorry, yeah, sorry, I jumped the gun there. I should, what I should have done after... Just yeah, after, you can yeah, tell it's green. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, after she's poured it in, it's green. Is which she clever? indicates it's neutral. It's a neutral substance. Yeah. Neutral pH. Right, okay, so afterwards, let's have a little look at what's happened. Oh. Oh, look at what's happened. We well, can clearly tell from the from the image here that the left-hand uh, cylinder Column. of the Hoffman apparatus is blue, mm -hmm. which indicates alkali, and the opposite side, the right-hand side, is yellow, mm, or clear, is, even is, clear, yeah, even, which yellow is, at the bottom. Which is, is indicative of an acid. So let's have a little look at the bromothymol blue. Here mm. we go. So here we go. We've got blue, so it's a, an alkali. Yeah, I'd imagine it's on the On the cathode side is alkali. Right, yeah, so it's about and eight. It's something. acidic on the um, right-hand side, side, the yeah. anode side. side. Yeah. So basically what we're saying... And this is why they, and this is why they have... Uh, the understanding that uh, the the anode is acidic, where it creates more oxygen, because Lavoisier was saying that oxygen is, is related to an acid. Uh, an acid is an, an acid former and oxygen. Hi hydrogen is related to an alkali. alkali. Absolutely, because you've got pH is potential hydrogen. The more hydrogen you have, the more alkali it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the less hydrogen you have, the more oxygen you have. Mm. Okay. Now. 
what she's doing here is that she's actually measuring the gases that are collected and comparing them she's trying to show to people the two to one ratio mm. yeah and here it doesn't really appear to be two to one does it well i'd say it's slightly under slightly under, under the two, two to, to one. one but now the most important point in all of her I've got to play this. Really. No, to see if you can get a, a, better, a better shot of that. Better shot of the. Of I can't. I can't get it. I can't get it. But the thing is, is, is that if you're in the classroom and she's telling you that water is being split, the um, the gases are coming from the water. Well, oxygen coming from the water, and the hydrogen coming from the water, and we can clearly show that because of the brom the colours of the bromothymol blue. It's alkaline, showing alkaline on one side, the cathode side, the negative side where the hydrogen's given off, and it's we've got oxygen. It's yellow to clear on the oxygen side. But is that really what's what's it's indicating? And um, we don't think that is. No, we don't think that is. Think we think that's if you want to perceive that in that way, we think that's rubbish. Think about this. The bromothymol blue is a pH indicator. When it's blue, like it is on the left-hand side, it's indicative of an alkali. Or the presence of, a, the presence the presence of, an, of an alkali. alkali. If it's uh, uh, yellow, near on yellow, like it is on the right-hand column, it's indicative of an acid. Hmm. Now, what else did she put in her water? Oh, didn't she put in the sodium sulfate? She put in the sodium sulfate. And what is sodium sulfate? It's a compound and it's made from sodium chloride, say, and sulfuric acid. Well, from sodium. From sodium and sulfur. And sulfur. And when you think about it logically... Sulfuric what, acid. Yeah, what we're saying with this demonstration is that what she's doing is that the bromothymol blue is reflecting the decomposition of the sodium sulfate and not the water. water. Yeah. yeah? Because you've got the sodium part of the sodium sulfate on the left and the sulfate part of the sodium sulfate on the right. Absolutely. And because, because the electrolytic yeah. process is splitting it. Absolutely. And what, what also we can tell from this demonstration is that by running electricity or a charge through the wall, through, through the el electrolyte, mm. which is your sodium sulfate, sulfate. I was going to say water, then. Uh, by... Uh, passing a charge through the uh, um, the electrolyte, being a sodium sulfate, what you're essentially doing is you are essentially acidifying part of the um, electrolyte, which mm. is your sodium sulfate, the sulfate part. You're actually ele uh, um, acidifying, acidifying it. it. Acidifying it. That's mm. one. Hence why it goes that colour. Mm. Hence why we see an alkaline colour mm. on the uh, left-hand cylinder. So, in our understanding, this is information, I, this is evidence that demonstrates that she's not splitting water, but she's splitting the sodium sulfate. She's decomposing the uh, material that she added to the electrolyte. All thanks to the bromothymol blue. blue. So, now, it's, it's very good, isn't it? It's absolutely no, no, wonderful. Yeah. But I can't see how anyone really... I can't but can argue against that. Can argue against that. Absolutely, of course. Now, I, we know some people will. Some people will want to argue against all of the information we've uh, put forward in, in this video. Yeah, because people are unhappy and they'll argue about anything. And they want their science to be true. Okay. Now, now this is why we want to set an offer to everyone a challenge. And the challenge is very simple. You know, to YouTube creators out there, uh, everyone who's been mentioned on the ticker below us, uh, to all the viewers out there, we'd really love to see some proof that water's hydrogen and oxygen. It should be very easy to prove, yeah. especially in the year 2021. Yeah. You yeah. know, with all of the technology that's available, mm. you know, we'd like to see somebody upload a video um, proving water's hydrogen yep. and oxygen and there's some big players out there who've got the money they've got the equipment they've got the they've got the they've got the know-how the know-how the, know the knowledge the experience they should be the able capabilities to please 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 take up our challenge please 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 absolutely sounds like a beatles song that doesn't, right, doesn't yeah. it please 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 take up our challenge all right yeah. absolutely of course so th there you have it so thanks ever so much 
And that's it. Isn't yeah, it? that's yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks ever so much. And always remember till next, next time, time if something doesn't make sense, like water being hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. It's all nonsense, isn't it? Absolutely. Bye. Yeah. Ta da. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere, it's 